So I was interested in bringing that conversation in, this kind of injustice conversation, but the very fact that um, the Middle East has already been in this apocalyptic place, you know, that it's already been going through this catastrophe for many years. Um, this is the model being 3D printed, and one of the talismans, um, which is the one that will treat um, um, fever and, and chills. So there's like three talismans, and this is just one of them. Um, okay, so coming to this, this, this work, this is like the final slides. Um, and so this is the second figure uh, that I'm developing, working on, and um, here at Photographer's Gallery, I worked on the narrative and the video for it. And um, I kind of, when I was asked to do a project um, for the Photographer's Gallery, um, like right after this, you know, everything with Brexit happened and Trump happened. And I was also in Berlin, um, like for Transmediale, and I, when I was there, the, the Muslim ban came in and I had Iranian passport. So for a week, um, you know, it was kind of insane because I was like, okay, I, I lived in the US for 10 years, I can't go back anymore. My whole life is over, that's it. Um, so Daniel uh, had the burden of me like crying <laughs> for days. <and laughs> But, but it was like such an intense moment to, rec to realize that your life can just, you know, just like, like one overnight, that can just become a reality. You know, and I went back and I, I you know, I still had that privilege, but I still have a lot of Iranian friends um, that live in the US that have work visas that don't know what's gonna happen in the, to their lives. So it's gonna, it's gonna influence, like real influence in the, in the life of many people I know that I, that I you know, I'm connected with. Um, yeah, that are close to me. Um, so I wanted to kind of relate that to, to, to this idea and you know, as soon as I kind of started thinking about the media wall and then um, everything that was happening, I wanted to do something with the media wall that would connect to you know, the wall that is being built. Um, so that site specific aspect of it was important for me and I started to like, do a lot of research and um, somewhere there I, I came across Yajuj and Majuj. Um, which are these figures that in, in Quran um, are known as the representation of chaos. Um, so they, they come on earth to do mischief, and what happens is that um, the people, which are the humans, ask this figure um, to build a wall between Yajuj and Majuj and, and, and the mankind. Um, and so a wall gets built, but the whole idea, this kind of like very apocalyptic, um, Islamic apocalyptic idea is that they will return. One day they will tear down this, this wall and they will return. Um, and also kind of like this, this thing that I have thought about a lot, which is, um, I mean, I, I think brown bodies are one of the most forgotten bodies of our time. You know, we're like constantly getting bombed and killed and mass murdered and there is very always little um, information or sharing of, of that content. You know, if the same thing would happen somewhere that is Paris, then everyone will change their Facebook picture, but it's not going to happen, you know, for everything that is happening constantly every day in Syria. And I was interested in that relationship, in this idea of um, perhaps like bringing back these bodies or thinking about this like very notion of the rejected body, the banned body, and what, what, what does that mean in the very current thing that we're experiencing. Okay, so this is kind of the process. I you know, modeled it, and this is still in, in, in progress. So again, like I'm only showing the video for the, for the gallery, and I still have to do a lot of work on that because I will have to do post-production on it. So you're just showing, seeing the like, raw format of it. But I, I just 3D printed this last week at FACT, and then 3D scanned it. And then the video that is downstairs that you, you can watch, or maybe you have watched part of it, um, the text, I, I wanted to write the text in a way that it is not binary, so like it's not like this is chaos and then this is the bad people and the good people, but through the development of the text, Yajuj and Majuj will become the people, the people who ask Yaj, the Yajuj and Majuj to get banned and kicked out and a wall to be built um, around them, 
they will become Yajuj and Majuj. Because if you, if you read the, the, all these interpretations of Yajuj and Majuj in different Islamic texts, um, you know, for Iranians, there were Mongolians at some point, or the representation of Mongolians. Um, for like other nationalities, they were like Turkish. In a very contemporary Islamic reading of them, you know, they're like the Jewish people, or like, I guess like Israel. Um, so if you read it, for every part of like the history, Someone has said someone is a representation of chaos. And I think that is what I'm interested in, the very idea of who is chaos for who and what does that mean. And I didn't want the audience to leave with, again, a like, clear answer of evil, good, you know, dark and uh, light, but rather kind of like a more complex way of reading through these like, very narratives of our time. OK, final, I promise. Um, okay, so where, where, where to go from here? So I, in the next um, one and a half year, um, as I'm doing a residency at IBEAM right now, and also like kind of want to continue this research as the residency ends, I want to create an army of these goddesses. So each of these goddesses will, will be, you know, the representation of something, and then will come to decolonize something, will come to decolonize something in relationship to some kind of oppression. Um, and again, I'm interested in playing with these tools, with these very technologies that colonize other nations, other bodies, um, as a way to bring them, bring them to life. But um, this, at the end of days, is like one term that gets used a lot for Yajuj and Majuj. So if you read through a lot of Islamic narrative of this, it doesn't say at the end of time, which has a very specific meaning in, in like Quranic, I guess, um, apocalyptic way of reading the, 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 the end. Um, and it doesn't say the end of the world, but it says the end of days. And I think there's like something very poetic in this also, which is that it's not the end of the days as like something, I guess, like completely ending, but rather a new beginning for something that is maybe dark, maybe evil, maybe monstrous for whoever who is now colonizing these like others, these monsters, right? And I'm interested in that. One thing that I've been saying is that I don't want to live in the future of people like Elon Musk. And so for me, this is about that. It's about altering that. And it's about building futures, building worlds where other things are possible. And um, I guess that is possible to alter that. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks.